Hello everyone, my name is Deb and I'm so excited to be here with you guys today. I have a great guest for you, you're in for a treat. This is gonna be a joy-filled, power-punched, uh, power-packed, power-punched uh, broadcast today and video. I have Dan Warlow who is all the way from down under in Australia. And Dan, welcome, welcome. Okay, Dan, it's, Hi. Four, it's uh, 3.45 in Colorado. What time is it in? I'm I'm calling from the future. You're calling. So I'm the I'm the next day uh, in the morning. So, yeah, it's amazing. Probably about seven forty-five in the morning. Um, which, when you have young kids, is well, well into the day. As, <laughs> oh, as everyone knows. True. Oh, yeah. Okay. I love that you have kids, and I love that you love children, and that you love uh, worship. And I mean, you yeah. are. You're exactly who our moms need to hear from because I don't oh, know about you, Dan, but there's so the joy, a joy of the Lord right now is so important. Yeah, I, I, I couldn't agree more. I reckon that's really spot on. Deb. It is spot on. And you know what? Uh, I don't know about you guys in Australia, but we over here in the United States, we just need some joy. It's so oh, yeah. easy right now to lose our joy as parents you know, mm -hmm. and to have our homes not joyful. And we all want joy, don't we? Oh, 100%. I think it's needed around the world, um, you know, particularly now with what everyone's going through. But I think that's one of the differences of, you know, when you have Christ in you, I think joy is one of those clues that comes out where catches people's attention and, and they go, wait, what's going on? Why are you different? And I think they see things like the fruit of the spirit, love and joy in particular. I love that joy is this, you know, the second one after, nice uh, love. after love. So it's important for and sure. And love is the greatest. Yeah. So joy must be the second greatest. Oh, no. <laughs> but joy is so important at this time. You're right. You're dead right. It is so important. And you know what else is that I learned recently that Jesus was joy filled like all the time. Like, oh. So, oh man, the daily audio Bible. I don't know if you ever listened to the daily audio Bible. I love the daily audio Bible. And he did this commentary about Jesus being joyful and he named off these scriptures. And I thought, what? That I mean, I could think of Jesus being joyful, but I never knew it was in the scriptures. So this is really cool to talk about this. Okay, 100%. so I want to hear about you. I want to hear you're a dad. Uh, you're also uh, in music. You do kids uh, music events, worship events. I want to hear. So how, how about your lovely wife, your wife? What's her name? Sarah. Sarah. Okay. Yeah. And I've got Grace and Bethany and Alice, three daughters, and they're aged 10, 8, and 5, nearly, nearly 6. 10 and 5. Oh, you have girls. Yeah, oh, three girls, so three sweet. beautiful daughters. We, I have two granddaughters and they are such a delight and a daughter and a son. My, my kids are a, a daughter and a son. And then I have two granddaughters and they are oh, just wonderful. so precious. Okay. Oh. So Dan, how did you get started in your amazing, like, tell us what you do. Oh yeah. So I write music for children and families. Um, and it's secretly targeted at the parents as well. Um, so I, I, I like to write music that I think I would like to listen to. Um, which is a bit of a challenge if you're wanting to make it good for kids. But the thing with kids is they're so adaptable. If it's good music, I think everyone should like it. So I write music um, all about who God is and what he's done and what that means for us. Pretty much every song you'd listen to is about describing God's character and all the things he's done. And Because I think, to be honest, that's the most important thing. I remember hearing probably, well, it was a long, it was a long time ago, a sermon once where the way we perceive God, how we imagine God to be will completely influence how we interact with him. So if we perceive him to be powerless and distant, we will treat him like that. We will, you know, very different to if we perceive him to what the truth is, that he's near and powerful and he cares. And, and children who have that mindset of the truth of God and where he is and who he is, will trust him more. They will take risks more in faith when they see people who've taken stare, you know, scary steps, um, but knowing that God is there to bring the miracle. And I think um, that's what gets me excited. I knew that was, if I, could, if I could work in that area, I knew it would be having generational impact. 
Um, and so that's the heart behind what I do, writing songs that build faith in the hearts and minds of young people. And I've heard stories back um, over and over. It's been so encouraging from time to time, just, you know, saying, look, your songs, we just play them all the time. Our children love them. Uh, even recently, I've just come back from camping uh, with some friends and just seeing their little son just playing, you know, in, in the bark on the ground and just singing one of my songs, just, you know, and the mum said, come over, have a listen. And I could hear that he was singing, you know, um, the Jump for Joy song, actually. That was his favourite song. And um, so that's really encouraging. The power of music, it gets stuck in your mind. We all know what that's like to have a song which we can't get out of our head. And I feel like at this young age, it's about getting good music into their minds so that for when they need it later on, they can go, yeah, I know the truth about God. I know he's powerful. I know I can trust in him. Um, so um, that's what it's really all about. So I travel around um, when, when I can, um, um, or all around Australia. I've done the Philippines and New Zealand as well. And um, definitely keen to come to America. I, I'm thinking in a couple of years and I've spoken, you know, let you know about that. But um, yeah, just want to have an impact, really. That's that's sort of what I do and what it's all about, really. Yeah. I love that. And I have a big smile on my face because I always worship before I start a podcast. I usually yeah, always right. sing a couple of songs. I feel like it's what God wants me to do. And I worship to your new album, the Grow album. And I'm telling yeah. you, okay, so you know what that is. When music or books appeal to children and adults alike, they call that and I'm pretty sure it was a Charlotte Mason who was an educator who lived uh, in like, I think in the early 1900s, uh, but she uh, talked about them being a living book. Well, Dan, your mm. music is living music because mm. I was listening to it and I was floored at how I could listen to your music all the time because it doesn't feel like you're listening to children's music, but it is children's music, like my granddaughter, <laughs> Aspen, she comes over, and I play the one that you did, which is, it's so amazing. And it's called, That's How We Know God Loves Us, that you did with the Watoto Children's Choir. Yeah, that's yeah. right. And yeah. she goes, she goes, Gigi, play church, play church. And you and know what that means. over and over and over. It's yeah. such a good song. Oh, that's great. Isn't that special? And that's the thing, I think, when, when kids are having fun, they just want more and more. And so I reckon there's a link there between what we're talking about, about joy and bringing fun into what we're doing in the discipling process. Uh, because, I mean, that's, I mean, all the neuroscience shows that when your mind is switched on, when you're having fun, you're learning better. Um, I think it's, you know, yeah. So I think that's really important. It's really great to hear. Oh, yeah. She loves it over and over. Push replay. Push replay. History. We watch it on YouTube over and over and over and over and over again. And we listen to it on Spotify. And so we just love it. We love your, your, your music. And, oh, and so you. I, and you know what else I love is when we were talking the other day, we were getting ready for the show and we were talking yeah. about discipleship. Yes. And I want to hear from you because you had some really good things to say about having a joyful attitude in discipling your kids. And I mm. remember with our children, when they were growing up, my husband and I purposed to disciple our children. It's our calling, right? As parents, hero Israel, to Deuteronomy. you know, that God wants us to pass on our faith. And, but it could be a drudgery or it could be mm. where they're fighting all the time or the yeah. dog throws up on the carpet or the phone rings or something always happens. And so what do you think about, how do you disciple your kids with joy? Yeah, it's a really good question. Um, oh, where do I start? Uh, what I've been trying to do recently is just monitor when I'm, when I'm trying to lead the family is monitor my tone and my, and uh, for lack of any other word, the vibe, what vibe are we bringing out here? And if it's getting a bit too intense, like it can do, like if, if the kids are just having an off day or everyone's tired and we've just, you know, it can get, it's funny, it can get stressful. I think we all understand, you know, in a way it's like, everyone just listen, I'm trying to, you know, it's easy to fall into that. I think what I am trying to do is monitor what the atmosphere and, 
and ask myself, how can I bring in, how can I bring in joy to this situation? How can I make this moment memorable and fun and create a, uh, find the important things that we want to do, which for us is reading, reading the Bible together or, you know, creating teachable moments when anything pops up as it does at random times. And how can we make these things fun? Um, and that is actually a really important thing. I've, I mean, I've, I remember, I'm sure you've seen that show, The Chosen. Have you seen that? Oh, yes. Love yeah. that show. I just, even in seeing that, you just saw, I think they portrayed Christ's character really well there with how much, how relaxed he was and, and him bringing in joy. I think even in the second episode, the way he's like interacting with the children, you know, they're watching him from the fireplace and he knows they're there, but they don't you know, they're sort of spying on him. And then he's making all these funny sounds, you know, even verging on flatulence. And it's hilarious. I'm like, <laughs> of course, that is what Jesus would do. Mm-hmm. You know, the kid, it, what happened then? It broke down the barriers. It, the kids who were uncertain, they, heard, they realized he was, oh, this guy's nice. He's friendly. This is, you know, and they're drawn to that. I think we're made in the image of God. God's our creator it's almost like we're discovering this part of how he's programmed us that we respond to joy because, wow, there's something in that. That's the mark of our creator. And so I think that's the question I'd put to everyone out there. And especially myself is how can you include joy in the important rhythms of discipleship in your life? Mm -hmm. That's so good. Uh, My husband and I, you know what, if we would have had your music, we would have, uh, we would have included it in our, uh, we call it a call to worship, but on Sunday nights, we had family night with our children. Yeah. And uh, we would uh, call them to family night with that song, Jesus Freak. Do you remember that song, Jesus Freak? Oh, yeah. Yeah. And what we would do is we would grab them. My husband would grab the arms or the legs, and I would grab one of them. One of us would grab the legs of a child, one of them would grab the child's arms, and we would swing them to the song. (laughs) And that's how we started our family nights. And so as soon as they heard Jesus freak blaring through the house, they would come running downstairs and we would grab them and start swinging them. And they loved family night. And it wasn't always pretty because they would fight. We have some really good videos that, (laughs) you know, seriously, we have some good videos that we made of them memorizing scripture. And they were like, they were out of control and then they were arguing, but it was so good as for me as a leader to remember, you know, it is challenging because that's, that's the the ground that Satan does not want you to take is discipling your kids. Satan does not want you raising up that next generation of Christians. And so he's going to do whatever he can, but, but I love what you're saying about thinking and intentionally thinking about how you can incorporate joy. Yeah. And I think the other thing the enemy does is he'd be happy for you to disciple your kids if it includes anxiety and stress. He would love to attach anxiety and stress to anything scriptural, anything to do with the Bible, because he knows that the kids will associate that with, right, anytime we open the Bible, this is stressful. And so I think that's important to be aware of is just, you know, the spirit of the law is is joy. I really, I think, you know, keeping the spirit of the law. Um, how do you do that? Really? You keep keeping the spirit of the law while still keeping a, you know, right, regular routine. We want to do this. We, this is important. We want to keep this consistent, but keeping connection is the most important thing. I think that's the most important thing in discipleship. Um, you know, alongside joy is keeping connection with your kids. Mm-hmm. Um, I've made a lot of wrong decisions, but I think the one thing I've tried to stick to, and I think I have done that pretty well, is over the years I've done what I what we call the daddy daughter date, and once a oh. month I take take them all out one at a time. The conditions are it has to be one on one and it has to involve sugar. That's pretty much it. <laughs> so just an hour, and at the young age you just go out. We just go to a park. We might go to the local corner store and pick up a chocolate or something and just sit down and play in the playground. And look, that will evolve as we, um, you know, as they grow up, but I'm pretty sure we can stick to that forever is like one-on-one and bring in the sugar. And, you know, I guess that's like the joy thing as well, but that connection is so important. I think um, monitoring that and prioritizing that and, and, and making that time with the kids. And sometimes I just have to knock it all out in one day. Like I take a whole Saturday, the first half of the day, it's like, right, 
first order, let's go in the car, go to the shop, <laughs> go to the park, take them back, pick up the next one, do it. And we might even do exactly the same thing with all three. But, you know, people say, why don't you just take all three out? And I think, well, this is what makes it special. So that connection, I think, is important in the, um, in the discipleship process. And, like, life has ups and downs, right? Like, sometimes it's really easy. Sometimes it's, it's really difficult. And that, like one of my songs, Mighty, Mighty King, you can, you can hear that on, on Spotify. It's about the first verse is about when life is good and everything's great. You know, it's easy to praise God. But then there's a line at the end is um, in every situation, no matter what we face, put your trust in Jesus and let him lead the way. Mm-hmm. And because and, then verse two is about when life gets, you know, hard and, and we lose our joy. Um, and again, what do we do? Well, no matter what we face, put your trust in Jesus and let him lead the way. Um, and I like, that's why I wrote that song. Cause I know the, it's realistic. I think it's pretty easy to, um, yeah, uh, that's why I wrote that song because it's just realistic for life. Really the, the, the ups and downs of life. I love that. You know, speaking yeah. of your songs, I was listening, listening to your grow album and I absolutely love that battle song that you have on there. Yeah. Do you know one of my I favorite. To your album and when, when did you finish that one? Oh, I finished that in the best time <laughs> of the world to, to release an album, March, 2020. Yep. And we released our first, uh, our <laughs> first book. Uh, well, we've written 10 books, but we've released our first yeah, book with wow. this new publisher in April of 2020. Oh, oh wow. Our book Help Club for Moms was supposed to be in airports and grocery stores and everything. And it's like, well, no, not really going to happen now, <laughs> but yeah. God it still worked it out. But I, so you wrote that in, 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 well, so you wrote that before, but do you know what I think listening to this song, and also the one undefeatable. Yeah, I cool. Love, oh man, I love those songs because um, <clears throat> I actually feel like you're being prophetic because wow. I feel like it came out in 2020 during COVID and we definitely yeah. need that, but it seems like we need it even more in 2021. Mm-hmm. We yeah. need to feel strong in the Lord and that the battle belongs yes. to the Lord. And I yes. love how you taught these kids in that song. It's a genius. You talk Thank about you. the armor of God and yeah. putting on that armor and tell, teaching your kids from a young age to put on the armor of God. I mean, yeah. how amazing, right? Giving them that tool for, for yeah. giving them a, a weapon, that armor of God. It's the weapons, you know, that yeah. we wear and you're teaching them about how to use those weapons in that song and then undefeatable, right? Thinking about undefeatable. And then I also love the other one that you, oh, I love this one with the donut man. I thought that was super cute with God came down and you explained why Jesus came down. Yeah, so that was really special because I grew up listening to the, to the donut man and, um, and he was foundational in my faith development. And so what's funny about this story is that it's now come full cycle is that now I'm sort of in that spot where I'm speaking to the lives of children. And I thought, Hey, why not bring him on? You know, as a kid, I would have never believed that that would have happened, you know? And it's funny, you know, life goes on and and you sort of see it, see how, how it played out. But I think it's just really special. And I thought, you know, there, there are a lot of people in Australia who've heard of him as well. And I, I, I think one thing that he did really well is just, he just said the gospel straight. He didn't veer away from it, you know? Um, and yeah, that's good. I wanted to write a song which said the gospel really clearly, just super clearly. What is the gospel? What happened? And then sort of create a little campfire atmosphere. So um, yeah, that's on that new album, um, Grow. And you have a coupon for us, don't you? For our, our, our listeners and yeah. our, our, our moms. Yeah, absolutely. I do. Well, I think what we're, what we're doing is for the, um, for the next two weeks, if people want to get that grow album, they can go on, um, my website. Cause that album is actually not on Spotify yet. I've got my first two. It's all out there for people here, but my latest one is available for download on danwallow.com. Okay. And I was thinking, look, why not just do a, a 50% discount for your listeners? Um, in the next week, if they if they can jump on um, danwallow.com. So basically, just do it now. Yeah, so do it forget. now. <laughs> but they can use they can use um, just if they put in the cl- the code help club mm-hmm. fifty help mm-hmm. club five zero, 
all lowercase, um, that will give a 50% discount on that album um, when they download it. I mean, and I might as well make it for any digital downloads um, of the audio on that on the website. So help, help Club 50. Help Club Get involved. 50. Yeah, I told my mother-in-law who uh, helps uh, at a Awana program at their church, and I'm like, this would be perfect for those Awana kids, you know. So yeah. we're gonna get that coupon out there. You better believe it. So yeah, do please tell your friends. Um, oh yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I'm glad you mentioned that um that battle song because oh yeah when I was writing that I knew I wanted to. I had that question: How do I tell kids about the spiritual battle that's going on and mention? You know, I wanna I I do want to let them know that there's a devil and an enemy out there, mm-hmm. but, but at the same time uh, that they don't need to be afraid right. of him. And so, you know, how do you balance that, but not soften it and make it airy fairy. And so that was the challenge with that. And I'm really happy with how the verses came out for that. Um, it was a bit of a process. I remember bringing it to, you know, the, I co-produced it uh, with another guy. And, and I think the lyrics I had before, he just looked at them and said, I know you can do better than that, <laughs> but we have a good relationship where he can say that it wasn't like the first thing he said, he just, you know, after a while and, and we decided not to record it that day. And I went home and I just changed it. And when I brought it back, I was beaming and I said, check this out. Like this is, this is radically different. Um, and so I'm delighted. That's one of my favorite songs. So I'm really glad. Yeah. You like that too. I loved it. That's what I'm saying. I worship through the whole album before yeah, we great. started today and I'm fired yeah. up. So yeah. Okay. I want to ask you a question. What is yeah. your favorite moment working in children's worship? Your favorite. Oh, I can tell you. Um, I, well, I want to, I don't know. I can tell you one moment that, I, that I'll, I'll never forget um, where I was doing a show in a school. I'd done music. I brought it. I do ventriloquism, bring out the puppet, do, do some magic tricks. But then we came to a point where I was doing an illustration which showed forgiveness and it was very visual and very clear where sin, where I had an object for sin and it just disappeared. And I said, this is what happens. This is what your life is like when Christ comes in. And, and I actually gave the kids an opportunity to receive Christ. And I said, if you've, if you've believed that, that you've asked him, then your life is like this. It's like completely clean. And this girl in the front row put her head back and threw both her hands into the air and went, yes, like this with joy. And I was like, oh my goodness. I know for that moment, for that girl, she was just, she had been following along the whole time and it was just all building up for her. And you could tell she needed this and wanted this and to hear that good news and to see her response in that moment, you can't get much better direct feedback than that um of a child responding to the joy of the gospel in that moment so that for me was that a particular favorite memory in in doing worship so you know that's what we're supposed to be we're supposed to be different from the world what you did there is you shared the joy of the lord with her and she was like yes and how many people in our world need us christians to be the most joy-filled people on the planet yeah, totally. And but how do you do that when life's hard? What do you what do you say about how do you that? how do you share? Or or just how can you maintain your joy when life gets hard? It's a really good question because I actually faced that head on last year when all my shows got cancelled. Right. I was completely. Uh, I mean, I'd spent the last five six years building up a rhythm of shows, um, and you know when you have five months all gone, that's and that's our income and. I was just, it's not just my income. It's actually where I get a lot of joy. I love jumping in front of a crowd of kids and people and, and seeing them just their brains exploding with happiness. I love it. (laughs) Uh, We've talked about this. I'm a seven on the Enneagram. So (laughs) that's about pursuing, you know, enjoyment. And I think so it's sort of built into my bones, Mm -hmm. but when all that was taken away, I, I found that very challenging, like really challenging. Um, It's probably one of the toughest years of my life. Um, and so look, I think I'm still on this journey to be honest, but my prayer is God, I want you to be the center of, I want you to be the fountain of joy that I run to. Um, and I've, you know, I've been speaking that out and because, because uh, you know what, this isn't the COVID isn't the last 
thing that's going to come our way to rock our our natural happiness but i think joy isn't tied to joy is different to happiness where happiness is tied to your circumstances but joy is constant joy is tied in the truth of who god is um and that doesn't change he's the same yesterday today and forever and so that's my question of how is how can we tie that how can we go to that place where we where we remind ourselves of that joy of who God is and what he's done. And how can we, you know, I, I mean, the only words that come to my mind now is what I've been reading recently about obeying the gospel is the gospel is God's love for us, but we need to obey the gospel in showing is love others as Christ has loved us, loved us. That, that was a personal revelation for me just a couple of days ago. Um, Cause that phrase jumped out at me, like obey the gospel in a book I read and I'm like, wait, obey the gospel. I just thought it was, to hear the gospel, how do you obey it? And I and I I really think that's the Holy Spirit saying that. I feel that if we can love others like God loved us, we will have a joy which is unshakable. And I think when we have a joy which is unshakable, we will be unstoppable in our discipleship of our children and our discipleship of others who are so desperate for that joy. Amen. And you know what? Um, I think a lot of that God's been teaching me also about that as well. Uh, receiving God's love, you know, in the word, it talks about that uh, the apostle Paul talks about in Ephesians, I pray that you would, that you would understand the wide, long and high and deep love of Jesus Christ. I mean, yeah. Paul says, I pray, we have to pray to even understand the love of Jesus. And I think once we really understand the love of Jesus and that we know that he's good yes. we can release our lives. So we can release our control expectations and just let him love us. And, you know, I've been learning lately about tapping into God's presence. Yeah, that's uh, good. Thinking about joy. And my husband and I were talking about it. And <laughs> my husband taps into God's presence when he goes on a walk. Ah, great. Rides his dirt bike whenever he's outside. Yeah. And, and I love I've got to meet house. him because we can both ride, ride dirt know. bikes together <laughs> and connect with God. That's great. I know. And he's, he's musical. Lock it and in. Me, <laughs> me, I sit on the back, on my back porch, which we have a beautiful backyard with trees. Yeah. And I have a fly swatter because I can't stand bees. I don't really, I don't really like nature that much. <laughs> and I live in Colorado. And so I like I love looking Colorado. at nature, but I don't like touching it. I mean, I like touching trees and stuff, but I don't, I'm not like, Oh, nature, you know, I have birds and they're nice, you know, but Some I have people a are. Water, you know, for bees. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. So that doesn't bring me joy. It brings me joy to sit there. But what brings me joy is when I open my mouth and I start worshiping in the morning. When I Okay. Pray. Yeah. Cause I was going to ask you actually just, and you, and you just answered it basically. I was going to ask you, Deb, how do you connect? How do you connect with God? Mm -hmm. Because, you know, and that's so good to hear that. Mm -hmm. um, our, our senior pastor says this, and I'll put this out to the listeners there is, how do you connect with God? Find the way that you know yourself, that, that you connect with God and go there often. Go there often. For some people, for me, it's with other people. I find oh, when I'm, yeah. <laughs> and I think, I think, you know, all, I think here's a good thing is that there's all different ways you can connect with God. For some people, as you said, they've got to be out in nature. Other people, it's the studious study of the word or reading books. That's where they just feel the Holy Spirit. Um, for me, it's in congregational and in music. Um, I think all of us can use all of those things. And that's important to know. It's not like, you know, so, um, but there might be, there might be one or two, which in particular just feed our soul. And I think we need to have that discipline of knowing what are those things and how, and, and we just need to block them in the calendar and let everything else fall around that. Um, don't, don't drop that time in your calendar. Because, uh, you know, when you're, at the, when you're at the end of your days and you're looking back over your life, the last thing that anyone says, no one says, just show me my bank account one more time. Um, show me, you know, all this stuff. It's about your relationships with others and your relationship with God and blocking that time out. That's so good. Do yeah. you think about the fact that God is within you all the time? And you can connect with him any time. And connecting with our joyful Savior brings us mm. joy at any time. But just like you said, 
like my husband, he's so happy. Oh, you know what else he's happy? He's happy when I make him bake uh, eggs and toast. Because he always oh, says, he always I says don't me, know a man who wouldn't be. I don't, well, he says to me, he goes, <laughs> eggs and toast. God is a genius. He yeah. made chickens and he made grain. And he's like, it's yeah. so simple. You crack an egg, you know, the uh. toast is a little bit more. But, but he, he really identifies like that. And then when we go on a walk, we go on a walk every day. You know, he's working from home now since COVID. And we go on a walk and he goes, isn't this the most beautiful day? And it's because he feels God's presence, right? Yeah. And, but I'm, I'm all about like, get me in my worship room and I'm going to be singing and singing the battle songs and worshiping God on my knees and crying, uh -huh. you know, and reading the word. But he's like, let's go for a walk, you know? Yeah. And I love it. Well, whatever it is for you guys listening, you know, what, how do you connect with God who is yeah. in you at all times? And, parent, and in parenting, like, I don't know, all the listeners might be in different seasons of their parenting. But you just, oh man, we we just came back from camping and we really, the, our friends have got kids a lot, you know, a lot younger. They're like basically age one, three and five. And, and I, man, we're sort of just, just out of that stage. And I had almost forgotten how difficult it is, how full <laughs> on, like we got an extra sleep in, like once their youngest one was up at 5.30 AM, you heard it right, 5.30 that's when the sun's up. That's when the kids are up. Um, that you, you've got to get up out of bed. You've got to be looking for, you know, you can't let these kids just wander around on their own. But ours are at least the age where we can go, oh, yeah, they'll play safely. We can have a bit of a snooze. Um, or all that to say, it's, you know, it is at that stage of life, it is, it is full on. Um, it is absolutely full on. And if you're not prioritized, like you've got to guard, I think that's the word I was looking for, guarding that um connection time with with the holy spirit in you and i love how you've said that deb about just remembering the holy spirit is in those who trust in him and um it's so good he's closer than ever he's closer than ever and you know all we have to do is turn you know like mm. i think so much of the time like uh during covid or even honestly on a monday morning i do mentoring mondays at help club and sundays i take completely off and I don't even think about help club and then Monday morning rolls around. I'm like, Oh wait, I have a video. And it's like, it comes every Monday. It's like, you think I would have prepared ahead of time, but every Monday I'm always like, Oh, I have a video this morning. Okay. God, what am I supposed to say? And those days when I am stressed and I'm like, yeah. I have to have a message, God, I have to have a message. Nothing comes. But on the days when I rest, and I sit with my tea and my Bible and I've worshiped and I sit down, I'm reading my Bible and I'm asking God what to say to my moms. Mm. It flows like milk and honey out of my mouth. Oh, it's so so good. easy. But that's life. The more, like if we're worried about finances or if we're mm. worried about a, a, a sickness or anything and we just get that fretting part, we can't rest and hear God. And yeah. so just relaxing and tuning in ever how you tune in and letting him give you that milk and honey for whatever you mm. do. So good. Yeah. Uh, it's really inspiring. You, you're doing a great thing. I think um, that's, I don't know how naturally that comes to everyone. Uh, it's, it's obviously a gift, you know, for you and, and for, um, and I think that's where, what we're called to do. And it's mm -hmm. so good that, you know, you, if you're even sharing that with, with people to, to do more of that and, and plug in and, and fill up, with the joy of the Lord, with, with his love. It's, it's a great work and you're doing. think about there. it, Dan, the joy of the Lord is our strength. Yeah, so true. That's our strength for more week. Okay. This morning, just going to be honest this morning. I don't know why. I don't know if you ever wake up and you have a cloud over your head. And I woke up this morning and I had a cloud and sometimes I don't even know what's going on in my heart. Like I have a lot of things going on and I don't even always know and I just, this morning, I just started crying my eyes out for no reason. And it's not because I'm emotional. It's just, <laughs> I think, so, well, you know, I am, I'm a woman. But I think that sometimes, like for me, I just have to get it out. And mm. when I tune into God through worship, I get it out. And then after I was done crying, I stood up and I sang a battle song. I sang Phil Wickham Battle Belongs, right? And I just, I Love started Phil. Well, I just, well, you know, Bill, if you're listening, go, love your work. You know, singing, <laughs> but I, the tears were gone and I was strong again. Yeah. 
That is a great song. I love it. So, well, do you have anything else? Like if you had one thing to say to our listeners about how, okay, how about this? Give them an example of how you tune into the joy of the Lord. So if you were starting a prayer to the Lord, mm. you were asking him for something, or maybe on a day when you're having a hard day, like what would your prayer be? Or like, what would you say or something? Like how, how I think, I think the key thing for me in that is it's, is to, if I'm struggling and if I'm just looking inward, I'm only going to focus on that struggle. I think it's about lifting your eyes and starting with what you know to be true. Cause sometimes you might not feel like anything, but you can at least say statements of truth. God, you are good. Thank you for your mercy. I think, I think gratitude is key um, in that thanking God. I mean, and it's a very different gratitude to this sort of spiritualism that the world says, cause they're not actually thanking anyone. And which is a bit of a contradiction because if you're thankful or you're grateful, you've got to be grateful for, for what and who's that from, you know? Um, so we have a God to be thankful for. We know where that comes from. And I think when you focus starts to be on what a grat gratitude to God, I think that's really helpful. There's a little game I learned recently. If there's any complaining from the kids, they've got to say, it started with, all right, any one complaint, you've got to say three things that you're actually thankful for because it's so easy to complain. And it was funny. Um, Bethany's just started to complain about the game. She's like, I don't like this game anymore. I said, <laughs> right, three things. Um, but it, that was a bit tricky. So we actually wound it down the ratio to one is to one where you've got, you know, if, if there's any complaint, you bring out a, a, a statement of gratitude. Um, but that's what it is. I think that's where, you know, God's constant, um, you know, um, set your eyes on him. And do that. And and the other thing I'd say with discipling the kids and parenting is bring, as we've said, bring joy in. And that's why I've done what I've done. That's why I've written this music. Um, it's a it's a one of many resources out there to help the family so that you you guys at home can just click play. And I've done all the work in the studio, and <laughs> you guys can enjoy it. I think it's I think it's wonderful. If and you like it, please play it. Use it. Yeah. Madden? and change the atmosphere of your home. Totally. Yeah. Music is so powerful. So I'd, I'd look at that. I'd take some time to think about what, what things can you do to either bring joy in directly um, to, to your desire, you know, uh, like, like the music, or it could be something just as simple as, all right, when we do Bible reading, we bring out the ice cream. I don't know. Just oh, pairing yeah. those. <laughs> uh, well, why not? Uh, yeah. yeah. Like, um, and, and so you bring that association. I think, I think test those things and I think it'd be so good. And, and if you find something's working, tell other people about it, share, share with your friends, um, what, what's making your discipleship journey easy and what's helping it. Uh, I think, um, we would we'll do that. We'll change the world one life at a time. That's so good. And you know what, the word of God, I'm pretty sure in the Hebrew, the, in the, somewhere in Deuteronomy, I think it says that we're supposed to, it's the word is supposed to be like honey on the palate. Mm. Parents are supposed to make the word like honey. It's not something to be beaten on the children's head when they do wrong. It's mm. not, it's supposed to be, we give our, we used to give our kids candy every time we read the Bible candy, hot chocolate, hot tea. We brought out the blankets. We cuddled up. We tried to make it very comfortable and sweet. Just like you said, of all the times in our kids' lives when they're going to get candy or ice cream, that is the most important time to have that association. And I love what you said earlier, not to have it be like a trigger of a negative thing, but like oh, a, yeah. a positive association. Okay. So next, what I want you to do, I want you to pray. Yeah. And I would love it if you would pray like, uh, pray uh, for anyone who might be struggling. Mm. I want, I would love for our listeners to hear you pray mm. about like how, how you could be, how you, what you, when you don't feel the joy of the Lord, what do you talk to God about? And so maybe just pray that and we'll just listen along and you can mm. give your mom some examples of that. Yeah. Yeah. Well, father, thank you for how good you are. Thank you for your character that you created this world you created us the very life that we have right now is because you spoke and it came to be and you've given it to us you're a giving god and lord i just pray for anyone right now who's going through a challenging time um that you will give them strength 
it won't be something just imagined or conjured up, but it will be a real experience. I thank you for what you've done in my life. I just remember the works you've done, the times where you have unmistakably stepped in. And just by your presence, you've changed everything. You did that in me earlier this year, Lord, when I was worried about the year ahead and the finances and just your presence, everything fell to the ground. I know you can do that, Lord. And so I'm convinced that encounters with you, Lord, that's, that's what it needs. I pray you'd help, I pray you'd help us to, to pursue you more and more. Forgive us, Lord, where we've walked away, where we've given, um, where, where we've um, given into um, constant distraction. Um, help us, Lord, to come back to that place where we're um, just, just enjoying your presence. And I pray, Father, you'd help us to learn to give more and more um, to uh, that, and that we'd know that that blessing of it's more blessed to give than receive. Uh, I, I think as we do that, something happens in the spiritual atmosphere. And Lord, I thank you that you've, you know, that you've created it, that when children worship, something happens mm-hmm. um, that, you know, Psalm 8 too, you said you've ordained the praise of infants um, to silence the enemy in the Avenger. Mm-hmm. And I pray that you would silence the enemy from the whispers that um, turn people from you, um, from the good God that you are. Lord, fill us with joy and power today. Give us our daily bread mm-hmm. and may your kingdom come here on earth as it is in heaven. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Okay, that was remarkable what you just said. Think about it, guys. Get your kids worshiping in your home because it silences the enemy. That's song. Oh, yeah. Too. Yeah, that's, that's, I've, I, I've, when I read that, I was like, wait up, this is like a spiritual law. You know, like God has ordained, he's made this rule that, when children worship, that silences the enemy. Um, so Psalm 8 too, um, and I thought, how true is that? Because he loves letting the, you know, it's like it lines up where he says the weak, you know, shaming the strong. Like he uses what the world would consider weakness. He's just, because he's so strong, he's just said, well, I'm just going to choose it. This is, how, this is how it is. You know, children, when you sing, that's going to, that's going to change things in the atmosphere. So it's it's so it's so powerful. Worship is powerful. There's another level when children worship as well. That is amazing. I'm going to run with that scripture. Let me tell you. I'm going to we're I'm Do going it. to start talking about that. Okay. Do it. Danwarlow.com. Yeah. Get the grow and if you album. can't spell that or remember just type in that's how we know God loves us and you'll find it. Then you'll find his his music on uh, YouTube, but it's Dan Warlow, W A R L O W dot com, yeah. and then get the Grow album because I'm telling you guys, you're going to be blessed by it. It's something you're going to want to play in your car when you're driving around, and when you're getting ready, like I did today. For today, I listened to it and it really encouraged me. And the coupon is Help Club Fifty, yeah. right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. For one week. For one, one week, week only. Okay. Dan, thank you so much. Thanks, God Deb. bless you. And uh, I'm, I'm so blessed. I'm so excited to, for everybody to listen to this. So uh, I just appreciate you and all you do for the work of the Lord. Thank Down you. Under. Down under, mate. And under, mate. No problem. <laughs> thank you, Dan. Bye-bye. Thank you, Deb. See ya. Bye.